Did you move things around on the docket? Wait, are we recording? I, I didn't move. We are now. <laughs> I didn't move things around too much. I actually just made a copy at the bottom saying FFA, but I'm going to go. Okay. That's perfect. Uh, but feel free uh, to deviate from that too, because that's that's the point of this first segment, right? He's right. <laughs> I accept. It. I, I was waiting for your co- second oh. confirmation. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Neil. You exist. Hi, Cookie. You too exist. I don't believe either of you exist. This would be really relevant if we were going to talk about another. Another, yeah. Wait, we are in the next segment. <laughs> That's right. So what I can say is today is the day. This is the Fancy Ramen Podcast. Apparently me and Neil don't exist. Welcome, welcome to my podcast, guys. <laughs> the Scott Podcast, episode 12. Yep. It's April uh, 23rd. That's right. I'm Cookie Skamilk. I'm imaginary saying- friend number one. <laughs> I'm blue... Wait, what's Blue's last name in? Blue, Blue Q Regard Blue Q Regard Kazoo. That's what it is. That's too long. I'm Neil. <laughs> I think it's Blue Regard Q Kazoo. Nope, that makes more sense. Yeah. I'm Scott, the real one. I already said I was cookie. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? It's been a week for everybody. It's good as to see always. That, it's good to see that we got off to another smooth start. <laughs> so seven days happened for everyone since we last recorded. Right. Yep. Seven days? Yeah. Maybe. Wait. It's Sunday, and last time was Sunday. Yeah. So six days have happened. Today is the seventh day. Yeah, today is uh, the day that's occurring. There we go. Well, what exciting things filled up your weeks? Well, I can tell you what did not fill up my week. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, that's oh. what I was going to say. I, Due to the new formatting of the podcast, I never put up the second part of the last episode on the Facebook page. I apologize to people that are listening on the Facebook page. <laughs> It'll be there soon, like today. (laughs) Which Just subscribe. Yeah, just subscribe. I was really late with those episodes, too. uh, You totally were. (laughs) They were. Came out on, like, Thursday. Wednesday and Friday, I think, or Wednesday and Saturday, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I only refresh my podcast feed on Monday through Friday, so if anything happens, like, Friday Uh, afternoon, evening, then I don't get it till Monday, normally. You're basically our most important viewer, or listener, so that, that (laughs) that does strike a chord with me. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah so that hadn't happened this week but um what else didn't happen for you i did not save and beat mr shifty for those who you don't know mr shifty is a game on the uh switch that is pretty much hotline miami but your nightcrawler as well so you're teleporting around i quite literally beat it last night by defeating the final boss and then the game crashed so now i'm back on the boss level <laughs> it crashed really it you know crashed. that's a feature <laughs> it's the final level plus one are you going to finish it just in regards to having a completed save file or, or does yes. that not bother you okay well just because it's i also want to speed run this game eventually uh it looks like a fun game to speed run yeah yeah Ooh, and with that being said i can also tell the switch struggles. What oh? What are the struggles? Uh so in Mr. Shifty there are so I can tell like sometimes there are purposeful frame rate dips. So like, you know, in the classic arcade games when you hit something, the game would like pause and stutter a little bit. But with Mr. Shifty, there's a lot of explosions that go on at points. And then the game just like goes, Hey, wait, give it a sec, give it a sec. Are you teleporting? Are you not teleporting? Nah. Is this intentional slow motion? No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Because there is intentional slow motion in the game. And it's easy you can, to identify between the two? Yes, because okay. everything changes colors. Oh, all right. And bullets stop moving. Ish. So, do you think it's a matter of the hardware, or is it just bad optimization for the hardware? I think it's bad optimization for the hardware, just because of what, what else I've run Zelda on, yeah. on this thing. Yeah. And now I'm doing a 2D top-down shooter it doesn't look like it should be that intensive no. to say the least unless we're actually seeing a th- it's actually rendered in 3d and the view that we have with the slight angle adjustments <clears throat> just creates a 2d looking image yeah that i know would be that's bad deep. optimization yeah, <laughs> yeah you're going a little too far to be a mr shifty apologist here <laughs> But the game looks fantastic. Oh my god, it, and it plays fantastic. It, it's just like the Hotline Miami chem, or chemistry uh, 
recipe, if you will, but then spiced up with teleportation and other powers. I didn't realize there was uh, time stopping powers. I didn't realize it was that either until I almost got shot once. Wait, is this top down modern day Dishonored? Because it kind of sounds like that. Teleportation, time stop. Can you summon rats? Unfortunately, you cannot summon Just rats. Just minus the that's Eldritch Horrors. Yeah, minus the Eldritch Horrors about that. If you can throw a whirlwind, that's another one. No, I could throw a pillow at a guy and kill him. <laughs> what? That's pretty cool. It's very hot in Miami. You can pick up anything and kill people with it. Yeah, but... And by kill them, just knock them out because... Mr. Shifty doesn't use guns, but he can pick up this sweet golden shield. I thought you mentioned and he becomes Captain America. I thought you mentioned bullets earlier, though. The, oh no, everyone can sh- shoot at Mr. Shifty, but he <laughs> can only knock them out. Yes, he's got a he punches through walls. So that's how they have it on Nintendo. Yeah, so the PlayStation Four port is mean, gonna be real bloody. <laughs> Nintendo has had gory stuff. It's just very few and far between. Yeah, like Mad World for the Wii. Which was really cool. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. We're, Mad World was pretty nasty. The only two colors you have are black, white, black, black and white, and, and blood. Then, and blood, yeah. Blood red. Because blood's not a color. And if anything, Except you, for had, the color of the you sea. had to be killing in more creative ways. So like, you had to amp up your violence if you wanted to be successful at the game. Yep. So yes, I, I will say that Nintendo, although they are shy to get involved with that kind of stuff, it's not unprecedented for them to have like something that's very adult themed. You just have to have a personality behind the project like Suda 51. Right. Yeah. So. It can't just it can't be mindless, I think. It's yeah. the big thing. It has to be it has to have good personality as to why. But yeah, so play wait for the survival horror Mario game where Luigi becomes a zombie. Uh that would be that's devastating. The, that's I love the, Luigi. Um, I also love Luigi. He's my guy. That's yeah. the secret level in Odyssey. Spoilers. <laughs> I also have been playing all of the Poyo Poyo Tetris. It's not out yet. They just have a demo, but oh my god. But you played all of it. I played all the demo all nice. of the time. Are there any frame rate issues in that? No, nah, man. It's nah. Tetris. <laughs> if we haven't figured out frame rate issues on Tetris from like the, the Game Boy releasing late 1980s, we got a problem. I just wanted to make sure that the Switch was still a uh powerful console quote unquote yep kind of maybe i'm not 100 percent sure now after after playing mr shifty it's, it's a like, console yeah we can tell <laughs> <It> you <exists. laughs> that and it's games are fun very much so i guess i'm just not that uh i don't feel that urgent about it being bad on or being or mr shifty not running well on the switch because you would be telling me too that more or less Mr. Shifty may not run that well on an Xbox 360. Kind and that sounds, sounds like that. ridiculous. So, Oh, speaking of Mr. Shifty not running well on an Xbox 360, the other day I watched a video on um, the transformations on Final Fantasy, not Final Fantasy, gosh darn it, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. So have you guys played Kingdom Hearts 2? 2.0, 2.5, 2.8. Just 2. <laughs> I've only played 2.0, I'm sorry. I haven't played any <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. I've, oh. I've played the first one, but, but I'm um, assuming it's like a magical girl transformation, but yeah, it's for a guy. Yeah, pretty much. Right? So basically what they do is they're like three side-by-side pictures of captures of, on the original PlayStation 2, the transformation happening, the PlayStation 3 port, and the PlayStation 4 version, so the 2.5 port of it, Final Mix, blah, blah, blah. And it's like the PlayStation, the PlayStation 4 version only takes less than a second for the like transformation to happen. The PlayStation 2 version takes about 1.5, 1.2 seconds. Somewhere like in the 1 point something seconds. But the PlayStation 3 version, just consistently at like 3 seconds for the transformation to happen. I'm just like, wow. Things I never noticed. It looks so much prettier on the PlayStation 3. But man. It's because you get more exposure time to it, I guess. Like, you get to see it for it a little bit longer. It actually just looks better on the 3 than or- it does the PS4. No, no. It looks pretty on the 3. Uh, okay. It looks better on the 4, but it just takes so long. And, and when you say more exposure time, it's quite literally just a freeze frame of Sora going, Ugh. So, like, <laughs> explosion behind him pose. What does and then he like, transform into? Mickey Mouse? No, nah, he transforms his... Uh, it's a garment change. Oh. It's quite literally just... He just gotcha. becomes a garment girl. Okay. Garment magical, boy. Magical boy transformation. Hell yeah, gender equality. 
I forgot what anime that was. What anime is that? Magical Girl Transformations? No, no. Magical Boy. The one about the Magical Boys. I is it also a yaoi? I didn't get that far. <laughs> so it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find this now. Last anyway. Time. Yeah, somebody, last time Cookie somebody watched, else they were just good friends. But <laughs> things may have changed. Um, so that's been, that's been Cookie's week so far. We might get more of it. Maybe. Upcoming. After I find out what this Magical Boy anime is. Yeah. Because it's... Because it was ridiculous, like, when they started using super moves, they were just naming random shit, and the mascot was like, stop just randomly naming your moves, guys. So it's a self-conscious, or an anime that's conscious of its own genre that is also kind of a parody with boys as opposed to girls in the magical transformation. Magical girl. Correct. Yeah, I... It sounds familiar, but I'm blanking. I think it's on Netflix. Entirely. Give me a sec. Well, in the meantime, Scott, what have you been up to? Let's see. Um, so I told you on our commute over here about my ongoing complications with my computer issue. My computer runs fine now. Um, I actually, I've been really enjoying having the extra space and a pretty fast hard drive since my previous hard drive was old as dirt and ran pretty slow so like for the most part i'm pretty happy about it things that i'm sad about somehow i lost my dark souls 3 like save content so my weird hybrid character that i had made and pumped like 60 hours into gone the other issue with that is that's who i was playing the uh ringed city dlc with and so with all that data gone I booted up Dark Souls Play Ring City and instead I got the option of new game. And I was like, no, load game, please. And I go to find it. It's like, you mean new game? I'm like, where's the load game? New game? No, don't tell me. Like, so I I decided to just, uh, you know, roll with it because that's, that's unfortunately the mindset you need for Dark Souls is no matter what soul-crushing thing happens, you keep moving forward. So I went ahead and made a brand new character, but I needed something to motivate me to get me through it because if I just went through and played as like the same thing again, I was going to get bored. I've done it a lot now. So I decided to uh, actually follow um, creating kind of a like concept character and now I have Jonathan Joestar. Oh. Yeah. So I got the... I like this. Yeah, I got the blue upturned hair. I don't wear any torso armor. And I, I adjusted the body. So he's literally like a triangle shape in, <laughs> in the chest. So I'm running around shirtless with the Cestus, which right now, because of how early I am in the game, they're only infused with fire. So I'm using his uh, his... Uh, shoot, what is it? Crimson Overdrive? Yep, yep. Punching everything with flaming fists. And I haven't built like a uh, Pyromancer build right now. But once I get to the point that I can uh, infuse my stuff with lightning, I'm going to start using that ripple energy to defeat every, every damn demon in Dark Souls. And it's great. I feel like I get summoned more and, and uh, just because of the like, name and the title. People people t- seem to pick me up more often when oh, I put down a summon sign. You can choose who you summon in Dark Souls 3? Well, you'll have a couple of options normally pop up um, for people to summon from. And I have just noticed it might be the times that I'm playing. It might might be other circumstance. But anecdotally, I feel like people are way more incentivized to pick up a character that they recognize as opposed to just like someone's random character build. Well, and they probably also know exactly what you're going to be. With well, that yeah, name. exactly. Well, they get to see an, a, like an outline of my character, too. So they see this dude who's bare chested. Also, the pyromancer like crown looks like uh, Caesar's bandana that. Oh, yeah, nice. That nice. Uh, Joseph wears. So. It's actually a pretty good costume, all in all. And so, yeah, when, when I come in, like, I've also been running, I think the ring is called Flynn's Ring, and so it increases your damage the lower your equip load is. And since I'm playing, like, half naked, my equip load is, like, 10% of what the maximum could be. 
And so I do some massive damage. It's really good. Like most things die in three punches. <laughs> so it's pretty great. Maybe you'll upgrade and become one punch man. I could do that, but I need to find a way to do a haircut. I think. And thin out a little bit. Wait, get a haircut? Uh, can you not change you, your appearance after? Yeah, your appearance is set as far as I know. You can change your gender, which I don't know how that affects your appearance. Because if you have the man face, but you just change the female body type, you might be a interesting looking character. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, now, now I'm wondering if... Uh... And and if it is a model swap entirely, what would happen? What's the like with like hair and stuff like that? Right, because you could you can do girls' hair for a guy's character. Mo- like you can choose your gender in Dark Souls, and then you get all of the same customization yep. options. You you can do the exact opposite of like so you can pick a guy, girl's hair, girl, guy's hair. So would it just keep the same hair, or does it swap the value automatically? Like let's say there are ten guys' hairs, ten and girls', 10 girls hairs. hairs, then girls' hair girl. nine matches guys' hair nine or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to change my gender just yet. But not yeah, yet. how I, far do you have to get into uh, unlock that ability to change gender the or gender change? Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> you have to get past the tutorial i guess without spoiling um in dark souls 2 it's really quick like literally in the tutorial area you can go and swap your gender if you want oh in I lied. The, in this one you have to be probably one two maybe two fifths three fifths through the game seems like a big time commitment at that it is a really big time to commitment to experiment. flip it but yeah that's about the same time that you get the option to get married and stab your bride in the face with a sword there's marriage in dark souls 3 uh it is for the third more obscure like final story resolution is you can either i think i talked about this a little bit you can either um stoke the flame so you can reignite it you can let it burn out or you can usurp the flame and in the third option you have to marry um henry of astora to be able to usurp the flame and to marry her she like lays with the shawl in this secret area that you have to find you stab her in the face with some sort of like sword and then you and then you're married and i think she's dead so no no it's Wait, a metaphor you you have to stab her in you the stab face. her in the face <clears throat> like that, that is part of the marriage that is the marriage ritual yes metaphor you also get the gender swap ring there. So we, if, we get the blowjob joke. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Metaphor. Uh, so if you're sad that that one less uh, girl exists in Dark Souls, you can just put on the ring and boop, there you go. <laughs> or vice versa, because if you're a female character, then you stab Anri Astora, the guy in the face. And there's no metaphor for that, sadly. Metaphor. <laughs> Metaphor. But yeah, so that's, that's how I've been staying entertained in Dark Souls. And... Um, We'll talk about near later, but I also finished that up. And so the last thing I did was, uh, at least of note, is I went and saw the movie Free Fire last night. Have How I- was that? I wanted to. I want to see it. It's on my list of things to see. It kind of reminds me of, um, at least from the poster and maybe a trailer that I've seen, possibly. Uh, Ace of Spades? No. What was that one movie about the guys at the casino and it had the spades it's the the magician guy right and he's like 12 there's like 12 assassins coming to kill yeah, him or something that one smoke and aces smoke and aces smoke and aces um smoke and aces is really like action oriented and like smoke and aces i think is a good movie it's a cool shoot em out this one i was telling neil a little bit is is a little different like they play with the whole like uh shootout concept and kind of take it to an extreme where no one shooting no not necessarily that but like a comment that my roommate had after we had gone and seen the movie is he's like i wonder how many minutes passed before none of the cast was vertical and the reason he said that is because the concept for the movie if you don't know it is that it's essentially like the 1970s and a like weapons deal goes south between uh these two parties one of them is uh a group of guys trying to get weapons it seems like they're for the like ira they're irish and they're trying to get weapons um i assume for for their uh fight back in ireland and then the other ones are just like 
kind of scumbag weapons dealers in uh I think it's Los Angeles or it's in California from what I know. So they're in a warehouse doing this deal. The deal goes south. I won't explain why. And uh they get into a shootout due to this like misunderstanding intention. And so the rest of the movie rolls forward with them locked in this pretty small space, all equipped with a bunch of, you know, like they all have a pistol at least, but then there's also the uh, like assault rifles that got brought in to the, I think they're AR 17s, 64s, AR 17s, 38, 52, 96, or a, <laughs> maybe it's AR 70. Anyway, <laughs> so they also, they also have these assault rifles in there too. And it's essentially, um, this like cover shootout between them throughout the rest of the film. Like until the conclusion of the film, they are now in this warehouse. They're shooting at each other. Tensions are high. And it's just this mix of like shootout action and relevant comedy to it. The characters are all pretty like, they all have diverse personalities and some of them are, are very like, I don't want to say wacky, but they're definitely weird or kind of extreme. And so it's, it's really entertaining. Um, just their dialogue between one another and the fact that like at any moment somebody could be shot. So they're all like laying down behind cover, talking shit to each other. And then someone peeks their head out and they get shot at immediately. And, and so it goes back to like, okay, well, I got to be cheeky to someone else. (laughs) And there are a couple of twists that happen as well um, during it that kind of change up the formula, which is really cool. It's essentially like every time that you think, well, they're stuck at a stalemate, some sort of twist happens to alter the scenario or the environment or what the like final objective is, which is really cool. So I've got to say, like, it's not a movie you're going to go to see because you want to be you know, touched by its emotional writing or you also shouldn't go to see it if you want to see like some matrix level, like gunplay in action or even John wick for that matter. But if you, if it still seems interesting to you, it's funny. Um, and it's just got kind of a cool concept that was really fun to see played out. So does that, that sounds like two Scott's up. Yeah, I'll give it two Scott's up. I think, (laughs) I think it's going to be my, uh, like date movie no i (laughs) i'm a sucker for like cult classic films i most things that have like that cult following i do like this is this is kind of going to be in that genre where it's like i feel like it'll be underappreciated but for the people who do enjoy it i think they'll really like it i could dig it it's talking about cult classics uh comparing this to reservoir dogs reservoir dogs is a cult classic is this as bloody as that in terms of casualties um, and well, blood. I think the worst you see is some like exposed brain. Actually, no. You know what? There's there's at least <laughs> one or two. There's at least one or two things that I can think of right now that are pretty damn gory. But it's not. We're not talking like uh, your usual Tarantino buckets of blood. Which what was really cool is I went and saw this at the Alamo, and so they do pre screen showings, and this is one of the coolest pre screen showings that they've done because they showed all of the like shootouts that have happened in movies that the producers or I think the directors of uh, Free Fire took inspiration from. And so they showed a ton of different shootouts. Like there was John Wick and there was The Matrix and then there was Django Unchained, which watching Django Unchained remind me, A, why it's one of my absolute favorite movies, but B, why Tarantino is like it's known for his gore because there's just buckets of blood like that's a really good grown movie. Up. It, I love that movie so much. So I haven't seen Django Unchained. You yeah. haven't? No, I have. We're gonna do a viewing. Yes, I, I'm down. It, it seems like an interesting I, movie. Do you I think get, I packed it up though. Do you get um? Do you get anxious around racism? Mm, Cause when you, it's in a movie, no. When okay, it's, okay, then you're good. <laughs> when it's being done in person, sometimes. Uh, when you say gore and Tarantino, though, uh. Tarantino's got a lot of blood. I guess he's not like super gory though. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, Reservoir Dogs is gory. Is it gory? It it just seems like there's a shit ton of blood. Like to find gore versus blood. Yeah, that's true. Actually, no, I should qualify that. I don't think Re- Reservoir Dogs necessarily is gory. I've seen gory stuff. Like gory makes me think exposed organs yeah. and like intestines falling really out gr- trying really to keep them wounds. inside. 
lots of blood i feel like is is less disturbing i'm less likely to lose my lunch even if i see someone losing like gallons of blood than i weren't am you to talking see, about like, 13 reasons why did you not finish that <laughs> no i finished it uncomfortable right you both finished it i can yes i can talk about that uncomfortable but, right that's what i'm thinking like so just bloody or gory for that I think that's gory though, because you like you see her skin like dip in. Okay, so yeah, that's that's something entirely different. <laughs> that I I can probably qualify that as gory, but it it's got um, no gore really. But it's just like ah, it's so uncomfortable. They did too good of a job. I think they I I respect that show immensely because of how accurately I think they portrayed everything. They, it practically gave me a panic attack. It's like I saw that and I was like, I think I need to vomit. The way you were yeah. describing it to me, I believe you had a panic. I had attack. a panic attack. Yeah, not to go like super into what happened to me there, I, uh, especially just for the fact too that I will eventually watch this like within the next week or two, so we can talk you to really greater length. Should. Yeah, and that's. I fine. guess I should probably actually watch it as well. I only like peeked over my shoulder while playing persona five while lizzie was watching it and then like the last two episodes because scott mentioned it i was paying less attention to persona five and more attention to it so i was just like and i was like okay okay i kind of oh. wow <laughs> seeing those last two episodes without any of the like lead up i wonder how that affected how you saw i saw it too. i saw like bits and pieces of lead up though so like right. i kind of understood the story There's i didn't definitely... see the first i didn't see the first three tapes Gotcha. Like at all. Uh, those aren't so bad. There's definitely a rising tension as. Oh, no, no. I felt the rising the tension. Continue, I'm, I'm assuming you may worse. not have had as much emotional attachment to the character by that point, but you were still equally disturbed from like a. That's a very astute standpoint. observation. I don't know. Maybe they they ramp know. up the love this girl on the last two episodes so much. No, she's she's charming and lovable from the start. That's like, good because, man, you're just like. She went through so much. I I saw that show and like instantly I was like, oh man, Hannah Baker. I was like, you're great. I you're wish so I, British. Yeah, I was like, I wish I could be you, Hannah Baker, but not have to go through any of this awful shit. You poor thing. Did you know she's British? Uh, I did not know she was British. I just heard her. They Netflix actually even has like a- We like watched a that. Decompression scene. Right. And when you heard it, I was like- her American accent is exceptional. Like, <laughs> I know, right? I was totally convinced. But I thought she sounded Australian to me. Because, oh, it could have been Australian. I yeah. always get that. Our New Zealand. Australian, I just think is like, I don't know. It's it's a permutation of the British accent. Which is so a permutation it's, it's of the New Zealand to, accent. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but just, it just, it didn't seem like, I guess like, it's kind the, of like the necessarily to, like Londoner British that I'm familiar oh, yeah. with. Yeah, it's kind of like listening to Hugh Jackman talking person. That's right. And then versus Wolverine. Because yeah, the only other uh, the only other British accent that's like really easy to identify is that like Cockney accent where like they're just IQ level is just like borderline above eighty, <laughs> you know. Or like Brad Pitt as a piker in the movie Snatch, Mikey? which is amazing. Have you watched the show? What? Have you watched the show? No, I haven't watched the show. Start watching the show. Okay, I'll start watching. It's on Crackle. We'll do. You're like the one person in the world that uses Crackle because of the show. <laughs> That's quite literally the only reason they were like, and now you can watch Snatch. This was actually on Hulu. Snatch on Crackle. And I was like, fuck, now I got to download Crackle? Right? Fuck me. Is it only Snatch on is, Crackle? It's only on Crackle. Wow, that's- Snatch is another cult classic. We're we're going through the cult classics here. It's too bad I'm never going to watch Snatch then. No. You can also TV find show? it on DVD. Like, no, the TV, sh- movie. the TV shows. I've got the movie right there. And the, oh, okay. No, okay. no. The TV shows only on Crackle. The movies on Hulu. I do not I have you. the DVD right there because yeah. I was looking for it. And I remember we had to actually go to Hulu to watch it, which is why we found out the show was on Crackle. Yeah. Snatch is one of those uh, Guy Ritchie films where there's like 12 protagonists more or less and they have a colliding storyline at the end. And it's just always it's always beautifully written because it feels like the shit hits the fan for everybody at the exact same time. And all of a sudden, the things that they were doing that were totally disparate from one another become very important (laughs) to the whole group. Wait, actually, I think I've seen Snatch. The TV show or the movie? The movie. Brad Brad Pitt is a piker and he's. Pikey. Yeah. And he's he's a boxer. So. 
is the TV show a continuation? No. I'm assuming it's different characters. Is it a retelling? Not really. So it's kind of like, so a lot of reviews of the TV show are not that favorable because they're like, well, the TV show's just like rehashing kind of the same exact thing. So um, Ron from Harry Potter, he is a rich aristocrat in it. The main character is the son of a bank robber. And they have a half pikey black guy boxer on their team as well. And they pull off a bullion heist bullion nice. by accident while trying to steal some money. And now, so instead of it being about diamonds, it's about trying to figure out what the fuck to do with all this gold. And everyone knows that they've got the golds, but no one knows that they have the gold. And then the Jews were in there. Yep. And they had the diamonds for the, a little bit, and they the were Jews partying. always always have to make an appearance. Yeah, so it's it's just as convoluted and crazy. But instead of being a two hour ride, I'm only three episodes in. Yeah, you spread it out a bit. Yeah. What are you worried about, Tommy? The Germans. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some great lines in Ooh. it too. Man, speaking of that bald guy, something else I've done this week. Oh, Jason Statham. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Jason Statham, that's right. I watched Fast and Furious, Fate, Furious Eight, Fate. I thought it was Seven. Furious. Isn't it Seven? No, it's Fate eight. eight of the Fast. Oh. Yeah, Fate of the Furious. What? Yeah, what is Fate, Fate of the Furious. The Furious. Yeah. That's what it is. Fast and Furious Fate. The Fate yeah. of the Furious. Because it's like because the, the um the logo's like a big F and then an eight and then mm. so Fate. Ah. So yeah, so I kind of watched Nathan Statham and The Rock just. Nathan Statham was just like parkouring it up. Jason Statham? Every- Nathan Statham. His younger, weaker brother, <laughs> Nathan Statham, <laughs> who has a heart condition. <laughs> he was actually the star in the movie, uh, what is it, Crank? Or what's the one where he has he has to keep his heart going? Crank, the whole time? yeah. Yeah, that crank. was Crank. Yeah. Wait. Are they both different people? Are no, they no, the no, same no. person? I'm fucking with okay, you. Good. There's only one. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one. And see, I <laughs> Didn't even realize Jason Statham was in Fast and Furious. I thought... Yeah, he was in the last one, or the one before so last. So he's a newer comer. So yeah, he was either in 6 or 7, but he was also technically in Tokyo Drift. Yeah, he, oh, because he played a little Bow Wow in that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> he killed Takami, or the main Asian guru of not Lil Bow Wow, but the country hick dude. Yeah, yeah. okay. Is uh, Vin Diesel still in the series? Oh, yeah. And he hulks out. So, like, he gets arrested at the very beginning of the movie-ish after, like, four things. And then, like... The Rock's in it, too, isn't he? Yeah. No, that's what I was talking that's about. Wait, shut talking up! About. Wait, I'm confused. No, Vin Diesel... Oh, yeah. So, Vin Diesel hulks out, but The Rock especially hulks out. There we yeah. go. Vin Diesel, getting... Vin Diesel gets big, but The Rock gets bigger, essentially. He does. You mean, like, comic book big? He or... gets well, I mean, comic the, book The big. Rock is already comic book big, yeah. which is the tricky part. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm just talking about, is it, like, meant in not necessarily a comical way, but the way they pull no, it off? it's comical now. Okay. Like, so, there's a prison break that's happening, and The Rock is chasing Jason Statham out of the prison, because he's like... Hey guys, I know that I'm arrested right now, but that's a real bad guy. Yeah. We need to get him. He's so, a motherfucker. So The Rock is not only fighting <clears throat> other prisoners because he's put half the prison in the prison. And the guards. But he's also fighting the guards. And the guards are like shooting at him with rubber bullets. So he's like, he gets shot once and you're like, and he goes, ugh rubber bullets you done made a mistake motherfucker and then he's just like walking towards people with shotguns and rubber bullets and it's just bouncing off of him and he's like ah and he just picks up a guy and just like throws him he totally hulks out at the prison and it's just the best great so yeah that that movie's full of tyrese being the best and Ludacris being the best and vin diesel being the best and was that like the conclusion to the series nah they they're gonna stop it at 10 apparently I read in an article somewhere. <laughs> For those of you Fate who of can't the furious see it. in two more movies. As soon as you said that, my eyes kind of rolled back into my skull and I slowly drifted to I mean, to what the left. clever titles can they have for Furious 9 and 10? Fine. <laughs> fine. Enough already. Oh, no, I guess that doesn't work because, yeah. No, I like fine. Yeah, Just, that's fine. So it's going to be like 
they all get inducted by instead of world government police they're all just meter maids doing fast and furious <laughs> shit in smart cars i hope oh but yeah so Turn it into an italian job kind of thing but Ooh, replace nice. the mini cooper with an even shittier car <laughs> so one thing that they did with fast and the furious fate of the furious was um i think i mentioned at the last podcast where i was talking about zombie cars yes i saw the zombie cars and it makes sense so basically what they did was this hacker like hacked all the smart cars which they're in the middle of New York. So I, at this I told point, you, going to be a I lot told of- you smart cars are going to be a problem. <laughs> and so basically they were just like, hack all the smart cars. Now they're all self-driving. Now they're all chasing after this police barricade. Also make them kill themselves. So like as the barricade was like going to a certain area, all the smart cars were in like these, um, what's the word? Parking garages. Uh-huh. And they were just like, dumping themselves off the parking garage. <laughs> so obviously with that... people in them <laughs> Holy shit. okay okay i was yeah. gonna ask about the innocent bystanders no yeah were... innocent bystanders all over the place what well, is the hacker a bad character yes okay she she um she does some things and makes vin diesel move against his team move against his family his familia so that's why vin diesel is the villain quote yes. unquote not really a villain until the very, 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 very end where he switches sides and everyone's like, okay, cool. He's back on our team, guys. They're pretty forgiving for a double crosser. I remember playing a and d game where someone double crossed to help the team. <laughs> and at the end, after he had successfully double crossed and helped, the team like stepped on his neck. They were just like, fuck you, don't ever cross us again. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, guys, he helped you. They're like, we didn't like how he did it. <laughs> Wait, they didn't kill them. They so. killed him. Oh, they did. Okay. They did not just like incapacitate, kill him. They they were like, uh, how low does his HP have to go till he's completely unrevivable? He's got to go negative. His um, yeah, you got to go factor. like negative one quarter of your maximum health, which is his bloodied factor. And he's got to so, go negative bloody. Yeah, and so what they did is they had like an AOE spell going on that did damage every turn. They're like, I just stand next to his corpse. <laughs> like I, I stand next to his prone body. And you're like, okay. He's going to roll some saves. And then we were like, right, he lasts this round. And he's like, the, the other guy said, well, then I don't move. <laughs> <laughs> he just stood there. Oh, man. Was there any... Uh, My group was a bunch of shitty people, I think, at the very end of it. Like, as far as working as teammates, because another time we had a guy who was just like, you know, I don't, I don't trust this guy. It's before he double crossed, by the way. <laughs> Same guy, though. Everybody hated on one guy. And you're like, I don't trust this guy. We should mug him. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you're a paladin. You're lawful good. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> you don't just mug people because they seem a little shady. Doesn't that, doesn't that get rid of some of your powers if you're lawful good in a it paladin? It does. It does. I was like, you guys, you guys are garbage. <laughs> That's bad. So at that point, is that why he double crossed him? Because he got fucking mugged? No, he didn't get mugged. He escaped, luckily. And but now now he knows like <laughs> the intent of his party. He has every right to double cross him, I think. Yeah, he double crossed them, but he double crossed the the like enemy. So he was still aiding his his party the whole time. So he was a spy, more or he less. He was a spy, and they killed him because he successfully <laughs> spied so well that they were confused too. <laughs> <laughs> and so at that point, the but person he, had, claimed, he had demonstrated his loyalty before they killed him. I should note that it's like, let's make a really hypothetical scenario. This has nothing to do with the game. Um, this has nothing to do with what the actual scenario was, but let's say that Neil is somebody that I need to kill. And Neil's very powerful and he's going to be really hard to get to like Neil's a king of something. So I go ahead and I defect. Cookie's in my team. I go ahead and I defect. And I'm like, Cookie, fuck you. I'm joining Neil. And I, I go to Neil. And I'm well, like, fuck you too, Scott. I'm like, I'm like, I'm joining you, Neil. And I'm going to help you out. And I'm going to demonstrate my loyalty. And then I never really do. But you're like, <laughs> he seems like, I'll take him at his word. He seems good. And then right when Cookie bursts into the palace and you have all your guards like ready to attack him, I just stab you in the back. 
You know, <laughs> you're dead. You're taken care of. And now the guards aren't really much of an issue either. Cookie can take care of it with the rest of the party. Cookie walks up to me, shoots me in the face. He's like, <laughs> fuck you. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> like, that's what happened. So, And I was DM and I was just like, I don't know if I want to give you guys more material. <laughs> <laughs> the, the player that did the double crossing. Yeah. What was what was his feelings like yeah. after the game? Yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so so Kyle was in this group, and and you know Kyle's artistically talented. So he he drew a little like memorial gravestone over <laughs> over what uh, that player's character model looked like, and then like texted it to him. It was his wallpaper, as like a never forget wallpaper for probably <laughs> six months. Wow! And we stopped playing D anD D after that. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I know. I did you did you end the other party members' lives in fitting ways? No, we just like we kind of disbanded as a group after that. There we there just, was like, animosity. There was the... there was trauma involved. <laughs> <laughs> Cause not all of the party agreed either. Like half of the party was super bitter and the other half's like, what are we doing, guys? <laughs> let's We're let's calm down and be reasonable. And that party got ignored. So you know, I, it would have been great had that caused like an a, ci- a civil war. That's a it little big a for a party. In the group. Yeah, enough that we as real people in the metagame did not want to play anymore. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it should have caused the civil war. Then you guys could have did the fractured butthole. Yeah, before it was ever even a thing. Before it was ever even a thing. Speaking of schisms and groups and things like that, one let's other talk mo- about our group. <laughs> <laughs> one other movie I saw was Power Rangers. That's right. Tell us about it. Not nearly as terrible as I thought it was going to be. Once again, that's like Neil saying, it was not bad. (laughs) (laughs) I played it, and it was not bad. Was it good? Well, I can say it was not (laughs) bad. (laughs) So, I, there are enjoyable parts, and Billy is a great Billy. Is Billy blue? He's the blue one. Billy's the blue one. He's also the black guy. Wait, but he's not the Black Ranger. I thought the but he's not the Black Ranger. Blue guy originally was some nerdy white punk. kid. Yeah. yeah, no, this Billy was on the spectrum. So we think he had Asperger's, mm. mm-hmm. or maybe autism. We're not 100 sure which one. But either way, he was a really good Billy. A Wait, really good Billy. Run that by me again. The new Billy might have Asperger's, or, or yeah, autism. or some other sort. He's of- on the spectrum. Okay, which means that he's got some sort of. I mean, they're all a color. They're all on the visible spectrum. <laughs> no, that that that's surprising. I didn't realize they were playing, uh, like a s- social or like social awareness s- aspect. Social justice rangers. Not, not not going into social justice, but like I. No, they kill him. They kill the the blue ranger about halfway through. Oh no! Then what they the bring f- him back. <laughs> They bring him back. It's okay. Because okay. Zordon's an asshat in this movie. Nice. Zordon, ass-hat? Zordon's an asshat. Just a straight asshat. He's like, Power Rangers, you must learn to morph. Go to the pit. Learn to morph. Okay, fine. You didn't learn to morph. Fuck you guys. <laughs> and, then, and then eventually the Red Ranger's like, why do you want us to morph so badly? So you could defeat Rita. And then he's like, well, fuck you too, Zordon. Then he walks away and then he comes back because he feels a little bad. And Alpha's talking to Zordon. And Alpha's like, Zordon, they've got to morph. So that way you can regain your physical form. He's like, I know, but these kids are so fucking bumming me out. Shit. <laughs> you did a really good Alpha impression there. Zordon, ay ay ay. He does say ay 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 like three times. In the movie too? In the movie. Was- but yeah, so then it's like, and then Zach is like, oh yeah, Zach's on house arrest and Billy helps him be out of house arrest with the ankle monitor and he tricks the system. But yeah, so they're all rebels. Mm. Kimberly's gay? Is she yellow or pink? pink? Pink. I remember that. So they used all the same names from the original. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe. No. Wait, so what colors exist in this Power Rangers? There's black... Blue, red, pink, yellow, green, green, green's in it. Okay, but green, I didn't, I didn't but green's isn't in green it. The leader, no, green green's is um, the leader later. Green is Rita. Oh, wait, so there's a sixth, kind of. And so basically, okay. so basically, if you follow the Power Rangers lore, because that exists, apparently, yeah. so 
because there's the new comic book series that looks really awesome that I actually haven't read. Rita actually gives the Green Ranger his power, even in like the original TV show. So like there was always that tension of, hey, he's going to defect, maybe. Actually, I think when the Green Ranger first came up, he was actually a bad guy in the TV show. And then they, I think they bring him in. And then they bring him in. Do they make him a leader? Like I always, he becomes the Red Ranger. No, I, he becomes the White Ranger. Okay. White Ranger first. White and, Ranger. But by then, he's already more or less leading the team. Yeah, and then he becomes the Red Ranger. He's also in that movie, the Power Rangers movie. The actual guy, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy and original Kimberly. They're both in the movie. They play cameos. They're uh, so they're they're not playing as their original characters. Obviously, they're just no. They're like, old. Okay. <laughs> They're old. Well, I mean, I, I they're figured too old to they're be just teenage. Old. I, I wanted to make sure that they weren't doing some weird time thing where it's like, this is Tommy from another dimension. Hey, nah, guys. Nah, it's movie four. It's movie <laughs> four. Oh, but um, that's Fast and the Furious 9. <laughs> they actually really explain the dinosaur thing really well. So Zordon's the original Red Ranger and Rita as the original Green Ranger, like betrays them while they're on earth looking for the heart crystal of life on earth or something and she's building she builds goldar at that point and zordon makes uh alpha hit a meteor on the earth which wipes out the dinosaurs but the dinosaurs are like the most powerful beings so their zords took form after the most powerful beings on the earth at that time thus explaining why all the zords are dinosaurs and why we don't have human mecha because if they did it later, then you just have a bunch of naked human robots <laughs> running around. That'd be pretty great. Just Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Oh man, everything always goes back to some source material. Never that, an original idea. That one. But yeah, so it it wasn't nearly as terrible. And I I was actually pretty excited when they started playing the original Power Rangers theme song in there. Too, I was like, Kicks, yeah, man. Wait, wait, like member berries. Go, go, Power Rangers. Yeah, they did the. So instead of like actually saying, no, I think they did say go, go, Power Rangers. And then there was the guitar solo that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh man, they're selling us more of our nostalgia. Shit, I think it was all the original names. Was the original Yellow Ranger named TT? I don't remember. I uh, I watched I watched very checking. very little Power Rangers. Is the one problem. I think I saw she was the Asian one originally, yeah. but I think she's Native American because the Black Ranger's Asian now. Okay, you had Jason Red Ranger, mm-hmm. Trini. Yeah, that was, was her the name. Yellow Ranger. She went by TT in this one though, because she didn't like the name Trini. Ah, then Zach the Black Ranger, Billy the Blue Ranger. Kimberly, the pink ranger. You know, I honestly didn't realize the Power Rangers had any, like, cohesive story at all, honestly. There's some flimsy Looking at this link and it, towards it looks everything. Like there, is, there is sort of a narrative. Yeah. Just read the new Power Rangers comic book. I'm sure there's a much better story there. <laughs> but yeah, there's some really flimsy just day-by-day narrative i was really hoping bulk and skull would be in the movie though he was not bulk and skull they were the um two like buffoon bully guys ah yes okay i do like their updated armor it's that's pretty sleek it's very alien yeah because zordon's a fucking alien what i thought he was the same guy in the wizard of oz (laughs) Don't look behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys watch uh, Guyver ever? I did. No. That was real depressing, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Guyver. I was I was really young, and I just know that that, died, that guy died. They uh, killed him. Yeah, he dies, but not always. Not for yeah. long. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just real depressing, because you're just like, oh, that was so gruesome. I'm like, eight. Why? You should watch Guyver. Long story short. I actually, I don't know if I would recommend it. I probably wouldn't. I was eight when I watched it. Uh, and it okay, gave me nightmares. So I, I, just, I just saw the updated armor. There, there are some similarities to Guyver in a weird way. Is that the same picture you saw, Scott? Or something similar? Uh, I saw their like movie poster. So uh-huh. really, it only got to be like helmets for the most part. But I figure if the helmets are going to be cool like that, the body's going to be cool too. It's Morphin time. That's right. Not wearing weird jumpsuits with diamonds on them anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. 
I mean, but that looked cool back then. That's the whole thing. Did it? Did, Did it? it? Really? It We're, still does. Where is my jumpsuit? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, where's my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite superhero, by the way. Frizo. Is that what his name is? Is fr- Frizo? No. No. What but, is his name? I don't know, but yeah, I, I love The Incredibles. One of my favorite like animated films. Actually. Well, only 10 years from now, we'll have Incredibles 2. Yeah, good. That'll be good to see. Really? Maybe. I'm not sure. They were like teasing Incredibles yeah, 2 I've a while ago. Heard, I've heard rumors about it several times, and it is probably one of my favorite Pixar movies. So, I, I read a Tumblr post the other day that was like, when did capes go out of fashion? We should have more capes. Capes <laughs> should be in fashion. And then the next person like... No more capes. <laughs> and then the next person like did the Edna a, GIF, thing. Yeah. a GIF of like all the capes and then her going, no more capes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh... <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. I, I had to look up to see if Big Hero Six, if that was Pixar, is it? I'm still no. Wait, Pixar's Aren't... the one that's failing miserably. Yes, is Pixar failing miserably? Kind of. They're Who... not Disney. Who did Zootopia? Was that Disney? Oh, that shit. Was that, that was Pixar. Pixar. Yeah, Zootopia so, was fucking awesome. So they awesome. were failing miserably. Then Zootopia. Then tell Zootopia, which is great. Oh, okay. So apparently, Big Hero Six is not Pixar, but it is Disney. Oh, is it DreamWorks? Uh, DreamWorks. Mm. Maybe. Like, I'm not even seeing DreamWorks here. Then who could it be? Walt Disney Animation Studios. Oh, well, well I, so Big Hero I 6 was just straight I Disney. didn't actually like Big Hero 6 that much. Really? I thought it was good. I, and I felt like it uh, did a good job of like introducing kids to the concept of death and coping with death. Since so, the main character's brother dies pretty early on. Yeah. So that's the thing that gives kids a concept of death, not Bambi's mom being shot in the face. I, not fe- I feel time. like there have been <laughs> other approaches that have I been think, more but, I think also, Disney's staple is kill off someone important to the main character well, real early on. Shoot, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they did it without dialogue in Up. I mean, oh man, that yeah, was the right. big and, concept of yeah, death. But and then, I thought Up was Pixar. Up was Pixar. Oh. Shit. Pixar's so, just so good at what they do. <laughs> so uh, it, it's not only just the death thing, too, but like th- there's a variety of reasons. How many times have we watched Batman's like parents die? <laughs> anyway. Batman's so, parents yes. are always dead to kids. Yeah, they're, like, they're already like They're in a dead, constant dead. state of being killed and being dead. <laughs> uh, that is true hell. Like I, I haven't really thought about Big Hero 6 in a while, so I feel like I'm just going to butcher my thoughts. But like... It's okay, I forgive you. It, it's also a movie that has female characters in important positions and roles without like sexualizing them or making them like romantic interests without necessarily sexualizing it, them. It They're passes just, that one lady's test. They who, are yeah, yeah. actually that that's correct. I'm I'm trying to think of where the, it has two female name. characters that interact with one another without not about being yeah, without being mentioning about boys. men at all. Yeah. yeah. Or plot and they've got more than two lines, I think it is. I'll also argue that the uh the protagonist is a child and the other protagonist is a robot and the other the other people are college students and so you'd be opening a can of worms if you had a romance between it <laughs> yeah yeah but like no matter what direction you go that's something you don't want to touch well he's a child but he's a child genius but he's still a child shh He's not a child at mind. That that's a good point, but it's so easy to shoehorn in any sort of romance, whether it's even something where the kid is, has a crush on one of the the girls. Yeah, I guess he doesn't. He well, doesn't he? Doesn't he have a crush on one of the? Uh, no, he doesn't. No, they're he, too weird for him. Much, he's into robots. Yeah. I thought I thought it was the girl who did the uh, like roller blades. Roller blades. No, he just and, really liked her tech because she did tech similar to. Oh, okay. Robots okay. That he liked. I, I think fine. it's even more of being. Of him seeing her as a role model. Yeah. So, That's good. I like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I totally agree. My so, only gripe with Big Hero 6 is he gives everyone else super cool things and then he just puts magnets on the back of Baymax and rides <laughs> him. <laughs> everyone yeah. else. He even takes the mascot costume and makes it fucking Godzilla. But him, he's just like, I'll just use these suction cups. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do this. No protection at all for me. Yeah, and then he falls <laughs> off and he's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe I should have installed a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Something. A bungee cord. Okay, what do you have to talk about, Neil? Have we talked about your week yet? I finished Persona 5, and within 
the 24 hours after finishing Persona 5, I started New Game Plus. That's a good sign. Uh, or a bad sign. You might like, have a problem. I'm not satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to play all, all of it. I'll have to play again. it again. Yeah. You might have a problem, Neil. After distancing myself from the game a bit, um, I can say that it's it doesn't stay as good all the way through. Like it does dip a bit, and uh, it justifies the dip too in a thematic or story or like plot related way. But I'm also like I I don't know. I think the ending of four still is better than the ending of five. Mm. And so for not for Scott or for our listeners. How does five end? I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> well, how does four yet? end? Oh, four? How does yeah. four end? Uh, it's just... Sure. I'll take that. I four, know how four ends. Something. So so that's another thing. I'm not sure if I... He's not sure how four ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I had like a true ending for five or if I just... If there's a... Like how many endings there are, which is also why I'm replaying it. Yes. Uh, are there multiple endings to four? Yes. There well, are multiple good endings to four. Because there's well. multiple endings Wait, to so, three, too, right? So did you watch the yeah, four for the animation? Was that the good ending? I actually don't remember, because the animation, while I liked it, did not really make much of a memory for me compared to, like, the reserve I have for Persona 4 is the game and not the anime. Why? The because it's just so much easier and you can get done with it sooner yeah but you don't get the same connection like the only thing the anime has over persona 4 and persona 4 golden is that you it, don't have to do anything well you've got the the beef bowl girl <laughs> too is she not in the game nope and uh-huh. it's funny because the the cook or the chef the head person there constantly ref- not constantly but uh refers to his daughter frequently in four and golden so you keep hearing about the daughter, and I think in Golden they even do a name drop for her, so you're aware of her existence. And that was kind of the novel thing in the anime, is that now you have this new character delivering beef bowls while you're running away from Kanji Tatsumi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that part. <laughs> but the way 4 ends, uh, normal ending, and I, I'm going to avoid spoilers, but... Because <clears throat> it hasn't been years since the original... Or the remake. Uh, or the I, remake I, of the remake. Or the yeah, fighting arena game that also had an ending. Because it had a story mode. Yeah, and that, that was Dancing the only all reason night why had the I wanted ending. to play that. And Dancing All Night story is actually... <coughs> excuse me. Dancing All Night story is actually pretty pretty good. Isn't it, though? I, I think it's legitimately like a... Hey, did you guys remember Dojima? Wait, is it Dojima? Sure. The uh, detective the that's your uncle? Yeah, that sounds mm-hmm. right, actually. Yeah. Hey, you remember Dojima? Yeah, he's a badass. Okay, here's some dancing parts, and now Dojima's gonna come and save the day. <laughs> Alright, that was kind of spoilery, but not I really like a that. big deal. That's cool. In 4, Dojima is like completely overlooked by some people, because he, without the knowledge of the other world, as we'll say, is really close to cracking the case. So he's an ordinary human, but yet he does, he's Yeah, still... he doesn't have the context of the rest of it. Exactly. The ending of Persona 4, the good ending, is that you solve the murder mystery. The I, true ending is that you solve the murder... And this is 4, okay. not, not 5. The true ending in 4 is that you solve the murder mystery, but you also solve the mystery as why people have personas to begin with in this particular Ew, context. They, huh. don't, they don't say that in the animation, I don't think. I think you just solved the thing. So fuck. Now so, I've got to play Persona 4 Golden? 5 ends in a way that the like everything's answered except one question that even the main character asks like someone points it out to him and he's like huh i wonder this technically isn't the end i guess there's still more gameplay afterwards but that really does sound like it would be something that they answer in a i do you call it a perfect ending ending, but the the robust good ending right so i'm i'm doing a new game plus just to see maybe there's something i missed uh persona 5 also was really good about and, and we're going to get into this at a later date much more, but five is good about hiding the importance of questions or answers, responses. Mm. So I'm wondering if I fucked up someplace. Gotcha. But I got a good ending. It was very rewarding. And there was even a happy animation at the end. So there's, I mean, I don't know how much of this I can keep, but it's a satisfying ending, but I'm still plagued with the question that is really nagging at me. So what you're basically telling me now is you should not cut this part. Yeah, I'm I, shooting for a shitty ending. Well, 
No, I I don't I don't know. Um, I'm shooting for a shitty ending. This I, is my job now. I don't know if this has spoiled anything for me as far as like playing the game. So I don't know oh, about sure. having it as a cut either. Oh man. So, so Persona Five. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I would still probably give it like a nine or nine point five. And upon replaying like the first couple hours, I'm still getting goosebumps at the scenes. I was getting goosebumps and shit. So it. That's pretty good if they can if you can make something happen once and have a good impact like that's what you're aiming for. Yeah. But if it if it works more than once like that's really good whatever it is, music, writing, animation. At, yeah. at the same time I say that too because I want to be clear that it could just be because I'm a giant fucking fanboy. Yeah, no. So we know that. Are you <laughs> that much of a fanboy that localization issues aren't plaguing your second playthrough? You know, I would have to say I was I'm only <clears throat> excuse me I'm only uh, aware of some of the bad script writing at certain points during the beginning specifically I remember a few things that I think either Ryuji or Morgana say that I'm just like that does not feel like a sentence a human would say that being said it's apparently becoming a big issue on Twitter and uh, there's even a polygon editorial on the quote unquote uh Persona 5 deserved a better translator. Take on a subpar script. Well, Atlas may have chosen speed over quality. I, I, I seriously have cut myself out of social media for like the last three weeks while I've been playing Persona 5, purely because I didn't want to get spoiled. How would you get spoiled? Atlas is cutting off everyone's head yeah, who tries I mean, to spoil this game. <laughs> I, I just, I've, I spoiled myself on MGS5. And, Metal Gear Solid 5? Yeah because kojima was not cutting everyone's head off no one cared man well right. what happened at the end of that you're not big boss oh okay you're you're venomous snake or what what's his what's the actor's name who does it oh, Kiefer God. sutherland you're Kiefer yeah. sutherland hmm. which i still stand by the claim that it would have been amazing if at the final reveal when you see normal big boss it would have been voiced by uh what's his face um, David Hayter? Yeah. Would that not have been awesome? I would have lost my shit. David Hayter's voice is, is inseparable from Snake for me. Either David Hayter or the guy they had uh, play Big Boss in MGS4 because, you know, he's older. Right. But either would have been like a big fucking twist as like, oh, that's why. And you could justify that Ground Zeroes when you're, when you're actually playing as Big Boss that you're not playing Big Boss, but you're playing the memories that have been transcribed into Venomous. Venom. Yep. Okay. Anyway, convoluted story is convoluted. Yeah. Back to localization issues and nitpicky uh, grammar. I understand some of these complaints because I think there are some points in the script that don't feel natural to some of the characters. But at the same time, I've also been watching subbed anime since like 1994, 1995, like with Marmalade Boy. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really bad. Yeah. And I, and like, I also play a shit ton of low budget, low budget in terms of the localization more than anything, but also the games too. Low budget Japanese RPGs and, and fan translations. So I am like probably in a different zone from everyone else. There are definitely times where i can else? ignore it what's that who is everyone else well i <laughs> i think we're willing to to admit that neil is probably editor-in-chief of the weeb cast portion <laughs> of things like yeah he you probably have the most exposure and i don't know i'd, I'd say like experience or opinion on like japanese media as a whole yeah. like it's not that <clears throat> cookie and i don't consume it but at the end of the day He's the Asian one. You are the Asian guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got a default to you. And, and, and for the fact, too, that like it also helps that while I might not keep up on it as much, most of my, most of my experience with anime and Japanese media is older, so I'm used to shitty translations. That's true. Playing Persona 5 one time through and now on my second playthrough, it doesn't seem that bad. Okay. There are some parts where I'm just like, that sentence kind of sucks. Right, and I saw those sentences. They do have some examples on there. There are some classics, like... <laughs> I like how they're already classics. I know. <laughs> Not even classics. They, they like, 
took some clips that I tried to read and imagine context for and had a hard time. He healed himself, dot, 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 question mark. Is it because he ate those inside there? What? Where are you? What are, what's going? I know you ate something. I know your verb. <laughs> I don't know anything past that. So, yeah, like that, outside of context, that totally doesn't make sense. But if you see it going on in a scene or, you know, you're interacting with it in gameplay, you can probably overlook it. There's a finger pointing like, at you, that point. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> so... At least I think there's a finger pointing. Either way, something traumatic just happened, and you're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, not not having the context of it, it still doesn't look like it would destroy my game experience. There was one particular bit on a rooftop, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but there was like a lack of a verb or an adverb that made the sentence feel real bad. And I'm surprised there no a dot, one dot, has dot, recorded there? it. No dot, dot, dot. Okay, I was about to say, their dot, dot, dots on these ones that are like being reported here are oddly placed. And a lot of them have the ellipse, like the dot, dot, dot. Like, I've seen that on several of the snippets they've taken out. Here so, we go. I'll continue to do my best to answer your expectations of me. That's just, that's not the way any English speaker would ever say, say like, it, but, I'll live up to your expectations or I'll meet your expectations. But it's also like the proper way to say it, I guess. That that sounds like a Japanese speaker saying it in English. Because they know the proper way to speak English, not the slang-oriented way that we speak English. Because buffalo, 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 buffalo. Yes, that's the right what? number. That's a sentence. That's a Did full you know fucking that? sentence. Yeah. It's got it's got proper noun. It's got verb. It's It's got common noun yeah that's go, a full fucking sentence it's anybody like, anybody it's who like, wants to see that should go to wikipedia <laughs> type in buffalo seven, seven times, times and you'll get a full explanation on that it's like a buffalo named buffalo from buffalo new york gets bullied by another buffalo something from, else from buffalo new york yeah like, and it's buff- like yeah it's a full fucking sentence english is a stupid fucking language they're just using it properly yeah, yeah. I mean, Japanese has stuff like that too, like muda, 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 muda. Exactly. Oh my god! You know what muda, uh, muda means? It's like uh, useless. Yep. Useless, yeah. useless. Oh, trust me, trust me. I know what it means. We've all watched JoJo. <laughs> I haven't. We talk about it every time. But yeah, it's so good. But yeah, so it's like English is a stupid fucking language. I half of my Pinterest slash Tumblr is just full of like English is a stupid fucking language. Listen to this fucking sentence. And here's the English major breaking it fucking down for you. So it's like, so I see these type of things and I'm just like, yeah, this is proper English, not slang English. So it's kind of like learning Japanese versus learning Japanese by watching anime. Yeah, I can you, see where you're you just, coming from. You don't say daijobu all the time. <laughs> unless you're me. Uh, <laughs> so let's mm-hmm. also be aware that they had to push back and delay this localization once already. Right. And I don't think they pushed it back enough. Yeah, enough yeah, to necessarily I mean, make it perfect. They, this they made me huge. wait since 2015, and technically I'm still waiting because I don't have my PlayStation nearby, so I would have been fine with them taking it. But well, Atlas well, part, did, part of that was the development, too, of course. But so. Atlas may have chosen speed over quality. Quality, And, I mean, at this point, like, I don't mind it. You know, I, I had to wait a long time for this game, and the presentation I've been given, I'm perfectly happy with. The rest of the execution makes up for this This drop the ball kind and, of thing. And there's definitely something on the voice acting side, too, that was probably rushed, rushed because we have Sakamoto becoming Sakamoto. 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 I'm just not I'm sure how things are actually pronouncing those types of names anymore. Like, there, there shouldn't be a enunciation on each syllable. So, Sakamoto. Sakamoto. Like, that, the, the second being the... Tran, uh, Sakamoto. The, right? So, wait. It's, so, if I started playing this in Japanese, would they actually say it Sakamoto? Yeah. They do? Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, fuck. Now, now you just lost all... Thanks, Ong. But, but at the same time, at the same... Ong? <laughs> Ong. Oh, yeah. from right. Avatar, Avatar, Last Airbender. Ang. At just the same into time, Ong. after going over the Japanese voiceover, which is what I'm doing on this playthrough, some of those recordings were not done in a professional environment. It sounds like they were recorded in a fucking can. So, speaking of things being recorded in a fucking can, I play a lot of um, fighting games, as you know. Played some Dead or Alive 5 the other day. 
some of the characters are just strictly Japanese. And yes, you can tell they are recorded in a completely different place. It's just like, I hope you don't mind me beating you up. <laughs> it is important. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, it's really jarring for me. Like, I don't know. the The one thing I will say though is that listening to the Japanese voiceover, it occurred to me that you can have a lower bit rate or like a lower frequency response, and not have it really affect the intelligibility of the language. With that being said. Let's call it a break and uh, return with some uh, more esports Olympics topics. Yeah, esports. <laughs> 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 